Hello everyone and welcome to the 0 to 10 Dynamics Theorem 2011 series. My name is David Kohar and I'll be hosting the interactive session today. Today's topic is Customizing Dynamics Theorem 2011 and we've broken the session down into three components. So let's start with the design concepts. We've actually had a quick look at accounts or account management out of the box and as an organization let's say that we've decided that there's five changes that we want to make to the solution. We want to go in and add an extra tab inside of the account form and call it reference information. We want to add some additional fields into the application, in this case customer reference where it's a yes or no, a reference description text box, and then an account size uh, pick list where we're going to be able to establish with our customers whether they're in the enterprise space, mid-market, or small business. And since we'll be actually tracking customer references, we next want to go in and add a view inside of CRM so that all of our users can have a quick glance of who our referenceable customers are. We want to add a chart in the CRM so that we can actually visually see how the reference information actually displays. And we want to take that chart and we actually want to add it onto a dashboard. So those are our five design changes that we want to go ahead and make. Let's go and see how those go in CRM. I've logged into Dynamics CRM 2011 and I'm here in the workplace as a system administrator. And I've clicked on accounts and you can see I have active accounts here in the middle. I have my charts up here on the right. And in order for me to go and start making my changes, I'm going to go down here to the settings area. And underneath settings, I'm going to select customizations. And then underneath customizations, I'm going to go ahead and customize the system. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually start to customize the entities. And entities is just another name for record types inside of CRM. So as you'll notice here, when I open up and expand the entities area, I see accounts, activities, addresses, appointments. I'm going to go ahead and select accounts because that's where I'm going to start. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the forms. I'm going to open up the main form, which is the form that we actually see when we go into CRM. And when I open up the form editor here, I'm going to actually see through the middle of the screen all the information um, that's already on the form. Okay. On the right-hand side, I've got my field explorer, which has all my fields that I can that I can put onto CRM or onto the form if I'd like to. And on the left-hand side, side, it shows all my related entities or records that associate already to the account record. So right now, I'm actually going to add in or insert a one-column tab, like we described earlier. And when I do that, it automatically adds this tab onto the form. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the tab and change this to reference information. I'm going to expand this tab by default because I want all my users to actually see this information when they open up a record. I'm going to click OK. And so now I have my reference information tab. The next thing I want to do is I want to add some new fields. So I go ahead and click on the new field button here down in the far right. It allows me to start to add my fields in. So the first one I'm going to call customer reference. And in this case, I want the type of field to be a two option field, meaning a yes or no, which is perfect. I'm going to go ahead and click on save and new, which will save this first field into CRM and then give me a chance to add my second field. And that one I'm going to call customer reference information and in this case in my type of field I want to actually make it what's called multiple lines of text because I want to make it more of a text box with a 2000 um, character limit that seems like a reasonable amount so I'll go ahead and save that one too and then lastly I'll add in the account size field and in this case, I'm going to create this as a uh, option set, which is another name for pick list inside of Dynamics CRM. When I scroll down here, you'll see that there's a little green cross that I can click on to add new items for my option set. So this was enterprise, mid-market, and finally small business. All right, so I'm happy with my set of items on my pick list. 
as you can see across the top here when I'm adding in new fields, I can also do things like set my requirement level to business required, which would require everybody to fill in that field if it was on the form. Um, and I can set field level security and auditing and other things such as that from here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this field for now. We're happy with how we've set that up. And now what I want to do is I want to actually drag those fields that I've just created onto the form. So you'll notice here at the top I see account size, so I'm going to drag that into my reference information. Or if I decided that I wanted that to be in a different area, like up here, I could do that. I could also then go down and grab my customer reference information. And I'll add this to the bottom. One of the things I want to do is I want to actually click on the customer reference information field because I want to change the formatting of it. I don't want it to just be one uh, width or one column width. I want to create it as two column widths. And instead of making the number of rows just one, I want to make it three. So there we have it. We've added in our fields, we've added in our tabs, and we've uh, got that information the way we like it on the form. So we're going to go ahead and save and close that. And that makes our, our big changes to the form. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and add a new view. And one of the nice ways that we can uh, add new views very quickly in CRM is we can take an existing view and then use that as our default template and then we'll create a new one off of it. So I'm going to use Active Accounts as my default view here. I'm going to save it as, in this case, Client Reference. Click OK. So now we're going to get a new view inside of CRM. And there's two things that I now want to do to this view to uh, make it referenceable or make it relevant to client references. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Edit Filter Criteria because not only do I want the account to be active, which was the default for an active account, uh, view, but I also want to make sure that it's referenceable. So I'm going to come down here to our new customer reference field and, and use equals and I'll select yes. And now the records that show up on this view, of course, will all have to equal that criteria. So it will only be our referenceable customers will be on this list. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a column here and I'm going to add that actual customer reference field onto the form. And because it doesn't uh, look like it's wide enough for me to read the entire column, I'm going to change the pixels from 100 to 150. That will actually make me able to see it. And I'm actually going to move it over to be right beside the account name. So I'm happy with that view now. I'm going to go ahead and save and close that. And that's the next change that we've successfully achieved. So our next step is to go in and add a chart. I'm going to click on Charts and click on New. I have the option here to go in and take any view that I'd like and uh, so I can select a variety of different views and then go in and select the fields that I want to put on my X and Y axis. So I'll start with active accounts and the fields that I want to select I'm going to use account name initially because I just want to do a count of the number of accounts we have and then on uh, my Y axis I'm going to use customer reference and what we're going to get initially is the number of records in the system and we're going to show it or display it by whether they're referenceable or not or in this case they haven't been flagged at all. We can select up at the top here what type of chart we want to actually do. So I'm going to use a pie chart and initially it's going to be a big blue donut for us but that's okay. It's how we're going to how we're going to roll here until we get our data updated. And then the last step we're going to take is we're going to come in actually and create a new dashboard. So I've clicked on Dashboards and New. I'm going to select a two-column regular dashboard just to get us started. I'll call this uh, 0 to 10 CRM Dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now I can go in and start actually adding in my dashboard components. So in the first area, I'm going to go in and add a chart. So one of the nice things is uh, go grab our pipeline 
and have a good look at that. So let's go and select Open Opportunities, and then Sales Pipeline. We get a nice little view of our of our pipeline. Now we can even make these larger if we'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, and I'm going to increase the height. I'm going to make my pipeline actually a lot bigger, so we can have a really good look at it. Update here for us. So now we get a nice big view of the pipeline. Very important. On the right hand side, I'll actually add in a new chart that we just created for referenceable customers, and you'll notice it actually defaulted to that. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. My big blue donut currently. The next section here, I'm going to actually add in one more chart. And I'll grab one off of contacts. And let's use active contacts and number of contacts by owner. That looks like a good one. Show how many contacts have been added by the various owners. Looks like David Kohar is the overachiever in this case. And then lastly, I'll go in and add a list view at the bottom. So a list now that we can actually look at as well. So that one might be best to use activities and my activities. And that way, any user that's looking at the dashboard can see what activities they have. I'm going to increase the width on that one as well to take up the bottom of the entire dashboard. And as you can see now, we've created an entire dashboard with our components on it here. We've got our pipeline, we've got our customer references, our contacts, and our activities, all been added automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close that. And that now gets all the changes that we're looking to make. The last step we need to make now is to publish all those customizations and push those back out to the users to actually now see. So once I click on the Publish Customizations, it will take, take a second for it to publish. And then we're going to go back into CRM and look at our changes. All right, let's go back to Workplace. And now that we've published, you'll see for the first time, actually, the pages are being cached, so it'll take a little bit longer to load for the very first time. But then once you get in and start loading those pages over and over again, they'll, they'll get faster and faster. So we've got our, still got our view of accounts by owner here. We'll have a new view in here, so let's go look real quick. Client references. Of course, that'll be a blank look because we don't actually have any referenceable clients yet. So let's go back now to active accounts. Let's open up an account record. Let's go see our changes there first. So you notice when I scroll down now, we have our reference information in our tab. We have our customer reference, yes or no. We're going to, go ahead and make this one a referenceable customer. We maybe make the account size here mid-market. we we'll go ahead and save and close that. Now we have our first referenceable customer. Similarly, if we wanted to actually reference a number of these all at once, so let's say that Adidas and Dell and Ford and GE and GM were all actually referenceable customers for us. We now want to go and update that, that set of fields all in bulk. I can highlight those, click on Edit, come back up here, select account size. We'll make those all enterprise customers. We'll all make them all referenceable. And by clicking on Save, we're actually going to now select and update five records all at once. And now I can come back and look at my account name by customer reference. Uh, chart that we've built and now you can see that we've got actually six customers are referenceable. The nice thing about this is using the visualization tools I can click on the 21 to see that the ones aren't referenceable and it'll repaint the screen or I can go see the six that are and see those at a glance. Lastly let's go in and look at our our dashboard we'll go to our 0 to 10 dashboard and there you have it, in real time, our new data, all up to date, all in CRM. So let's wrap up. I want to thank everyone for joining the, the session today and uh, watching the video. If you need to get a hold of us, uh, if you want to see our complimentary Learning Labs program, um, email us at learninglabs at 0to10crm.com. Or if you are interested in our project-based consulting, 
you can send an email to info at 010 Again, this is David Cohorn, and I want to thank you for joining our session today.